today I'm going on another adventure. Hold on. The plan is to ride through Staffordshire. It's 6.20 in the morning and I'm about to set off to Euston. It was mid-November so the days were cold and the nights long but I wanted to see the late autumn landscape and to enjoy the darkness by doing a cosy wild camp. Why Staffordshire? Well, basically I found out that my dad and little brother were meeting for a pub lunch on the Staffordshire Derbyshire border and I thought I'd cycle to the pub over a couple of days, camping wild along the way. I don't know Staffordshire at all, so I planned nice easy distances and thought I'd just see what I found. And I had a couple of ideas about how to make the adventure extra cosy, which you'll see later in the film. Amazingly, there was a bus literally from outside the pub, so with my Brompton folding bike I could use public transport to make a brilliant little round trip adventure. So it's about 10 minutes left on the train now. Is I've already broken my little rear lamp, I pressed the catch too many times and it won't turn off so I've had to take the batteries out. It was no big deal but that's broken. <laughs> and then I realised that I've forgotten to bring a bag for rubbish. So even though I checked my checklist, I somehow failed to put in a bag for rubbish. And then I've also forgotten the bag that I bring that I put my water in. It's like a, a bag with straps. <laughs> so when I pick up water, I'm going to have to use another bag, the blue one that is um, a dry bag, actually. I mean, it's okay. It's not really good. <laughs> oh, so I just hope that's all that I've forgotten. <laughs> seems to be a little bit all over the place this morning. Anyway, it's fine and we're nearly there. So my plan was to ride about 25 miles on the first day, camp wild over on the Derbyshire side of the county border and then cycle to the pub on the second day. The first thing was to make my way out of Stafford. Here following a cycle route to get out of town. I looked at the wet landscape and thought my cosy evening camp might be quite difficult to do. Really good, isn't it? <laughs> the first section of the ride was along the canal. They're lovely, aren't they? Google. <laughs> oh. Here you go. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, thanks very much. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Sticky mud. <laughs> I've only got a little bit more to do, uh, and then we're coming up onto a road and into the park. <laughs> so, if you saw my last film, you'll know that I just finished chemotherapy for breast cancer. Since then I have been doing NHS recommended exercise for adults. Basically just walking, jogging, cycling and a few minutes of high intensity exercise, burpees, press ups etc to build myself up. The ride had actually been harder than I expected so far. Ah hooray! I mean it's lovely to do sort of <laughs> off-road sections but it's quite hard. Right, so, road! <laughs> On my previous ride, after my last round of chemo, I really struggled. So I'm hoping these legs 
are uh, are gonna be absolutely fine today. <laughs> it's a much easier ride as well. Just the idea, really, is that a recovery ride? <laughs> so now I was at Shugborough. It's a big country park estate with a house on the edge of Cannock Chase. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I was going to walk it and then I thought, no, I'll just go. <laughs> well done, anyway. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Cheerio. Chugborough was owned by the Anson family. And I thought, I didn't think of that name. There was a George Anson who, in the 1700s, when Britain was at war with Spain, sailed to Canton, actually, near Hong Kong, where he used to live, and captured a galleon. But I didn't know what the connection was with this place. He captured a galleon, right. a Spanish one. That's where the money was made for this. For this, for this right. estate. Oh, that's millions wonderful, isn't it? Worth, millions. Yep. It helped develop the estate yeah. and became what they wanted to be called as a paradise. Uh, so it, it's fascinating. Uh, and and there's, there's 900 acres, there's lovely walks. Uh, I volunteer, when, no, I used to do yeah, once a week, but once super. a fortnight or so. I'm Susanna, what, what's uh, your Colin. name? Colin, where are you from then? Susanna? Manchester, yeah. I'm a Staffordshire person, Stoke-on-Trent. My father was in the ceramic tile industry. I worked in the chemical industry where we produced uh, inorganic pigments and ceramic colours. Because of the ceramics industry, it was a Stoke-on-Trent based yes, industry. Right. So you'll have to come again. And... Oh, thank you so much. It's been so interesting. Yeah, See you next time. <laughs> Bye. So I headed on into East Staffordshire. It was so interesting finding out about a whole new place. banana, kiwi and apricot in the fridge down there. It's quite good actually. Oh, I just love roads like this, it's just like nobody. So now I was crossing the valley of the River Blythe and it was super pretty. About to leave, already packing. Come with me, I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't. So Blythe is the name of the river and it means happy, <laughs> as in Bonnie and Blythe. Good morning, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, this is exactly what I wanted. Okay. Lovely 
middle England sort of landscape. So now I had reached the Dove, which is the border between Staffordshire and Derbyshire, and I've done about 25 miles. So this is the Dove, which comes down from the Peak District and then flows into the Trent. So I'm going to try and camp wild. So it's about one o'clock now, probably a little bit after. And the afternoon is really short because it's winter and it's sunset at four. Uh, so I need to kind of start counting down towards finding somewhere. Uh, basically, water is the next question. I was a bit worried about the look of the sky. So, yeah, so I haven't got my normal bag, but I've done that. It's quite good. It seems okay. It's quite a lot of weight on the back though, because that water's four litres, so that's 4k. So the rest of the gear, 6k is probably fine. But uh, I'm glad I'm not doing very far. I'm not going to do anything too uh, challenging, hopefully. Right. Now, we can start scouting the first spots. Right, suddenly I saw there was a quite nice field here. I'm going to see if it's good round this corner. It's facing the wrong way, that's all. Yeah. I want the morning sun. It's a really good spot. I think this will do. This is this is great actually. It's not quite what I thought. But um yeah. I had forgotten a couple of things. So I was slightly nervous as I pitched my tent and worked through my gear that I would have forgotten something else. But it seemed like I had everything. So far, so good. Absolutely super. Now, the weather was gorgeous. Cold, but a beautiful sunlit afternoon. So now it was time to do one of my cosy ideas. So today, I'm gonna to try a new idea. I'm gonna try and make scones bake scones this, i obviously made the the dough at home i made it yesterday so i mean whether whether it will rise i have no idea whether it will cook anyway i'm going to give it a go i bought extra fuel 
and of course I've got more time because it's so I mean it's it's super early it's like three o'clock anyway back to scones oh my goodness I think I probably ought to put it on fairly low so nice sitting watching Hear them sort of frying. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, <ow. laughs> this is just incredible. Oh. It's too much. Perfect. <laughs> Oh my god, that is fantastic. Wow, I can't believe it. <laughs> wow! Oh, that is amazing. <laughs> wow, can you believe it? How incredible. Mm -hmm. I've got two more. <laughs> wow! a little bit burnt on the bottom but I mean god <laughs> oh, I'm laughing mm. <sighs> the bottom is quite crispy it's kind of fried. <laughs> wow. I didn't think that would work. Ah, time for coffee. uses tea lights. I thought it'd be really nice and cosy. So fresh mange to fresh cabbage and roasted cashew nuts and toasted sesame seeds and the whole thing's gonna be fried and then quickly boil the noodles in the same pot and add some oyster sauce to give it a bit of a flavour. It's really warm now. I don't think it is, I think it's just because I'm busy doing things. So it's really still. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Yum! <laughs> It was so cozy. This was my setup. 
So I've got my trekker chair, my bike tucked in the porch, and I've got my stove and my candle lantern. And it's just a matter of making a flask of tea and sitting and watching the night sky. Beautiful morning. Lovely. I love the feeling after you've done all the packing and then you just glide away on the bike. It's so nice. I'm always thinking, oh, is there going to be a puncture? Because <laughs> that can happen too. Quiet and peaceful, we just Now I could see the Pennine Hills and I was nearly there. I descended back down to the River Dove. And then after a lovely lunch, amazingly, the bus arrived. And I made my way to Derby. So had I enjoyed my autumn adventure? Yes, I had loved it. The beautiful November landscape and interesting places. And my wild camp had been super cosy and relaxing. Good. What a lovely trip. <laughs> so... I'm on the train now back to London St Pancras. Uh, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.